Hello my fishy fans. This is Jean with Terabyte Solutions and I am here to talk about accrued landed costs. Landed costs in general. So I'm going to come here and we're going to look at the default account mapping in Fishbowl. Okay and so in here when we're talking about shipping accounts we have shipping type part numbers. We have a shipping accrual, shipping expense, and a shipping income. When I'm reconciling my receipts and I come in here to reconcile, okay, so there are all kinds of things I can add here. I, let's pretend it came from um, across the sea. I would have uh, container freight. I would have customs and duties. I could also have additional charges from the vendor for uh, mold setup fees and what have you. Okay. And in order to add those, most of those things, container freight, and customs duty do not get do not get applied to the vendor's bill. They come to us from the freight forwarder. Okay, so in order to have use this little guy right here, add item to vendor bill and uncheck it so that it will be for the freight forwarder, I need to have a shipping type part number, which is why shipping type part numbers are my favorite type part numbers for all my reconciling items. So these guys that don't get added to the vendor bill, I don't want them mixed in with the shipping accrual. So if I come over here to QuickBooks and I'm going to look at my balance sheet, okay, I do not want, and this is a personal preference, you can do it differently, but I think it makes perfectly good sense. I do not want that shipping accrual mixed in with my freight forwarder stuff. So. I've created an account here called Accrued Landed Costs. Okay. Doo, 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 doo. Okay. We are going to uh, use this account over in Fishbowl. So anytime I make a new account in QuickBooks, I should be in the habit of going over to Fishbowl and going to the accounting integration and bringing over those accounts into fishbowl so that we can map to them. Okay. So that's good. Now I want to check my parts that I've set up here previously for that are shipping type parts. So I'm going to filter by shipping type. Okay, custom duties. Ah, so if I'm landing costs, it's never going to actually hit this expense account, but just for grins, um, I'm going to put this all in a crude landing costs. So it's in the right place and it's not mixed up with my outbound freight, which is what the shipping accrual is really about. Okay, I'll save that one. And this is freight in. I prefer my freight in not to be mixed up with my freight out. Okay, save. Powder coating, that is an outside service, so we will not mess with that right now. Our purchasing variance, we covered that. We use our purchasing variance when we have the yellow triangle. All right, and this is my outbound shipping, so it going to shipping accrual works just fine for me. 
but I think I might hard code that in there rather than just using the default. So. Okay. So save. So now I'm going to come back over. Okay. So this purchase order came from overseas. And as we go to reconcile it, I'm going to come here and my ref put, put in my bill number and I'm going to put in my bill date, which happens to be today. And that doesn't work the same way as, Cal as QuickBooks. All right. And now next, I'm going to have freight in. Of, let's say $5,000 for a container. And I'm not adding that to the vendor's bill because that's going to come from the freight forwarder. And then I'm going to add my, my customs duties. Okay. And I'm going to make that a thousand. And that is also going to be billed to us by the freight forwarder. Okay. So on the next page, it's going to ask me how I want to allocate my freight in. So I come to the next page and my freight in, you know, I don't want to do it by cost or quantity because then the screws get the most of the freight in and they're the smallest, littlest stuff. So I probably want to do based upon size or weight. So I'm going to go with size this time. Okay. And then next, it's going to ask me how I want to land my custom duty. Well, I probably want to do that based upon cost because the screws have a lot less duty than the brake pads or the handlebars. Or if there happened to be absolutely no duty on screws, I could uncheck the screw box and all of the custom duty would be split between off-road brake pads and the handlebars. Okay, I'm just going to do that for as an example, whether it's realistic or I don't know. So I'm going to come here. And so now it's going to tell me what the unit cost was. This was the original PO. This is the build cost. We just let that ride. And what the landed cost of each of these items is. So then it summarizes it the total that's going to be on the vendor bill from China or wherever is going to be 21,000 and the total not on the bill is going to be 6,000. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that. And now I'm going to send it over to QuickBooks and we're going to take a look at that bill in QuickBooks. Okay, our export is finished. Let's go on over to QuickBooks and let's go to vendors. And, oh dear, does anybody remember the vendor on that? Well, we'll just have to find the bills from today. Reports, um, custom reports, transaction detail, uh, the date would be today. And you can see we've been doing a lot of work today. It is going to be my Monroe Bike Company is that bill. So here are my landed costs, okay? And here's the things that goes landed. And I know this looks like an abomination. And you know, your first gut when you look at it is, is, wait a minute, what are all those entries about? But it does work. I don't remember, I mean, I've made, I've gone through and tied it all out and yes, it works. So here, my vendor bill is 21,000. And then when I go to my balance sheet, I now have $6,000 in accrued landed costs. And then when I get the bill for that $6,000, I'm going to enter it directly into accounts payable. Um, so 
Uh, let's find a good one. Freight vendor, that, that looks good. So I'm going to put in my new transaction. I'm going to enter my bill. And it's my freight vendor. It's bill number whatever. The amount due. Which turns out we didn't have the paperwork in our hand. And instead of it being exactly $6,000, it's $6,023. All right. So I don't want to code that to freight and shipping costs. I want to code that to accrued landed costs. And then I want the difference uh, of the $23 to go to landed cost variance because I know it doesn't match exactly what was in the in there. So 6000 goes to clear out my accrued landed cost. $23 is landed cost variance and that's, you know, my guessing. And now I can routinely once I have the vendor's bill, go through and reconcile my accrued landed cost account. So, accrued landed costs and what I want to reconcile to is zero. So I want to know, you know, what I want to map, be able to match things up. So Monroe bike, okay. So reconcile now. And we are all good to go. And next time we have a balance in accrued landed costs, we will pay attention. So that is my accrued landed costs uh, workaround with a little advanced landed costs information. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little video and we will be bringing more to you soon. Thank you much. Bye. Thank you very much for viewing this video. And uh, we at Terabyte Solutions are a full service fishbowl support firm. So we would like to help you with your fishbowl issues. Give us a ring at 949-645-1019 and we will be happy to help. Thank you very much. Bye.